All right, so you got everything out of the box, and this is pretty much what you get minus the neck strap. I'm not going to put the neck strap on right now, though, because it's kind of cumbersome with the neck strap, especially if you're using it on a tripod and stuff. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the battery inside the camera so you can start charging it. So looking at the camera, this is obviously the top of the camera. The battery goes in on the bottom. Now there's this door here. It's got this little slide lever. You slide it and the door pops open like so. The memory card actually goes in this little slot right here and the battery goes in the larger chamber. And you can see the battery right here. It's got an arrow on it and it is directional. So the battery actually goes in this way. So if you're looking at the bottom of the battery, that goes towards the camera and then you slide it and it's got this little blue lock lever there. So if you press that lock lever, so watch, see how it auto locks? And now it holds it in there. Now you're gonna need to get yourself a memory card uh, one does not come with the camera, so I recommend getting something like this. I'll have the linked below. It's very affordable, Extreme Pro. These things go for like $20. You can get a 120 gigabyte one. Um, the 64 gigabyte one goes for like 15, 16 bucks or something like that. Very affordable, works great for 4K and uh, 120. So now this card goes in like this. You aim it like that, and it just rolls in. So the label of the card actually goes towards the camera and it just clicks in like so. And then to get it out, you just press on it and it clicks and then you can gr awkwardly grab it out of the chamber. It's a little hard to grab with the fingertips like that, but so that just goes in there like so. Once you do that, you could then start charging the camera. So to charge the camera, you need to open this little door on the side and you have some ports there. So you have a micro HDMI port, you have the headphone jack up here on the top is the microphone jack, the red one. You can see there, it's kind of hard to see, my hand. So the microphone jack's up there. You have the USB-C, which is on the top, and the HDMI. Now, the cable that the Sony gives you has a USB-C on one side and a regular USB on the other side, the square kind. So the USB-C is that oval shape that's on the newer devices these days. So you plug that into the USB-C port, like so, and the other end here plugs into the charger and then you plug this thing into the wall and then you can plug this into the wall when you plug it in an orange light is going to light up underneath where the cord is and you will know that the camera is then charging all right so once the camera is charged you are ready to start using it but i would recommend putting on the wind diffuser uh, also known as a dead cat they call this a dead cat and uh, it basically just covers the large microphone on the top of the camera that big screen area is where the mic is and this will stop wind noise that like horrible wind noise you get when it's windy out so i recommend putting this on and it just slides into the hot shoe right here there's usually a plastic cover in these hot shoes but this camera actually came without a plastic cover and i'm guessing because on the zv1 it was so tight so many people were having a hard time getting that little plastic cover off so sony just didn't include it on this camera so you just slide the dead cat in like so and now you have that mic uh, wind diffuser in place there. So at that point, you can go ahead and take the lens cap off on the front. That's the lens cap. You just squeeze, pinch, take that off. And now the optic is exposed. You can see the glass on the front of there. I would recommend getting some kind of UV filter to protect that because there's not really much protection. It's good. The glass is really close to the front of the lens. So you can get a 40.5. It says it right there. 40.5 would be the size of the filter you would need. First thing I want to do is turn this unit on. So here's the switch on the top. I'm just going to turn that on. And again, guys, this is a crash course. This is a quick setup crash course. This is not my full fledged beginner's guide. That's going to have much more detail than this. This is just a crash course to get you going as fast as possible. All right. So when you first turn the camera on, it's going to prompt you with, you have to select your language. I'm just going to select English, enter date and time. It's good to go. I'm going to select New York because that's where I live. And I'm going to keep the daylight savings time set to off. And then the date and time I'm going to set. So today is September 19th, 2021. And it is 8.25 a.m. Set that like that. And enter. And then it's telling you about the Imaging Edge app that you can get for your devices. And that's it. And then the camera turns on. The lens automatically popped out when I turned the camera on. 
Now, if you have noticed, there's a lever here on the shutter button, and that will allow you to zoom in and out. So that's pretty cool that the lever is built into the camera like that. To take a photo, you would just press this button. This is the shutter button. So it's not working right now because it's in movie mode. So it's not going to do anything. However, if you hit this red button, it'll start recording. So now you can see the camera's recording, and it gives you a big red rectangle around the screen to let you know that it's recording. And on the front of the camera, it has this tally light here that lights up to let you know it's recording as well. So out of the box, you could see you could just turn this on and start recording. So let me just show you, though, some of the settings that I want you to change in the menu because right out of the gate, this thing is not set up for the best quality possible. It is set up pretty good, though. Don't get me wrong, but I just want to show you how to get the best possible quality for just a crash course full auto user setup. All right, so the first thing you need to know is up here on um, this button right there will select between the modes. So if you press that button, if you press this button, it'll switch between the modes and you can see the mode on the top left there. It's changing. This is intelligent auto mode and that's what the camera is in by default. And this is intelligent video mode which is what the camera is in by default. So it'll automatically pick all the settings for you pretty much. Now this is S and Q mode and it's currently set to slow motion video, 120 frames per second. So again, I'm gonna go to video mode here. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the menu button. And I want you to go into the menu. And if you hit the function button on the back of the camera here, the FN button, I'm hitting it with my thumb, it'll tab through the top menu items, as you can see, just by pressing it. Now, if you use the directional pad on the back of the camera, you can go through just the pages, like so. So I just want to show you, if you go to the second tab, so what I do want to show you is the file format, because it's set to HD by default, and I recommend putting it on 4K. So you can go to 4K there. Then I have, I like prefer using 24P. Now, if you don't see these frame rates, guys, that's because your camera is set to PAL mode and not NTSC. If you go into setup, right here, NTSC PAL selector. So if you go in there, you can change your camera to NTSC so it's set like mine, and then you will see the frame rates I have. If you have different frame rates, like 50, and 30 and you can't find the 24 and stuff your camera is set to pal out of the box mine's set to ntsc because i live in north america all right so another thing i wanted to show you is if you hit the function button i just put the lens cap back on to make the screen dark so it's easier to see this menu here so if you hit the function button it'll bring up this menu and notice this option here it says steady shot it is set to active mode you see how it says act there so if you click on that you can turn this to standard or turn it off. Now, I'm gonna turn it off because I'm recording on a tripod. You do not need to have the stabilization on if you're recording on a tripod. And also, when you have the stabilization on, it crops in a lot, so you lose a little bit of that wide angle effect that you get with the 16 millimeter. So, for this purpose, I'm showing you how to use the camera for vlogging in a studio environment. So I'm gonna set this to off, because again, I have it on a tripod. Now if I go back into the function menu, you also have this option. This is the soft skin effect. It's set to medium. I'm gonna leave that on right now so you can see what that looks like. Another option here is the audio record level. Now this you really wanna check out. If you're ready to record, you wanna go in here and you wanna see where the meter is at. So you wanna make sure that you're not hitting any of the red. Right now, it looks pretty good. It's a little bit hot, so I might lower it just a little bit. I would lower it to right around there so it ends up at the negative 12. Something like that at this particular distance looks pretty good. So that's what I would want the recording meter to look like when recording. So make sure you go in there and adjust that because you might have to turn this up or turn it down depending on how close you are to the mic and also depending on if you're behind the camera, in front of the camera, and so forth. This, this mic is optimized for being in front of the camera too, by the way. So it's not gonna sound as good if you're behind the camera. Now, another option I wanted to show you is this product showcase. Now what this does is it basically will allow the camera to focus on something close to the camera when you hold it up. And I do this all the time when reviewing products like lenses and stuff. I'll hold the lens up in front of the camera and you'll see the camera will automatically focus on the lens. And that's what this feature does. It automatically sets the camera up so it does that. And there's actually a button for that product showcase right here, that little button, it's the garbage can. 
So you can just hit that button to enable and disable that feature. This record lamp option is you can turn that off so it doesn't light up on the front of the camera. That's a nice feature if you don't want people to know that you're recording them. Zoom range here, you can change that to clear image zoom if you want, which I recommend doing. Uh, it's great for video. The zoom lever speed, you can change the speed that the zoom goes in and out. And I recommend leaving it at default to try that first, but I like it a little bit slower, so I'm going to check it to two here when I'm recording. Uh, in standby, I like to leave it fast though. All right, so another feature you might need that I want to make sure you know about it right away is monitor brightness. If you go in there, you can actually change the brightness of the monitor, as you can see here, plus two. So because there's no viewfinder on this camera, you're going to want to need to change this from time to time. Now you can also go into the brightness setup and change it to sunny weather mode. That'll make the screen super bright and much easier to see outside in the sun. It'll also chew up some extra battery life though. So if you're in a studio environment or a darker environment, I would recommend lowering the brightness on the screen and that'll give you a little extra battery life. All right, another option I wanted to show you guys about is right in here in file settings with the picture of the video camera. If you click on that, you can change the file name to a title which I highly recommend doing. And then when, once you do that, you can go over to the second page and title name settings. You can, this is where you can actually put the name of whatever you want. So what I want to do is I want to set this to E V E V 10 underscore. So now I have EV10 underscore as my file name. So when I record a video, it'll be EV10 underscore like one or 001, for example. And it'll be much easier to find your footage if you're using multiple cameras. All right, another feature I wanted to show you is in here under power setting options, click that. And then if you go to order, auto power off temperature, you're gonna wanna set that to high. Make sure you set that to high. And then click okay. And to navigate this, guys, by the way, I'm just using this control wheel up, down, left, right, and then the center of the control wheel is like OK, is Enter. So that's how I'm navigating in this menu system. All right, so now I'm going to put the camera on a tripod, and I'm just going to tilt the screen forward like so, so when I'm recording, I can see what I'm doing on the screen. And that's what I'm going to do. And once I'm ready, I'm just going to hit the record button on the top, and it'll start recording. All right, so here I am recording. I have the camera set on a tripod right in front of me and the front of the lens is right here. So the camera's about three feet away and it's at 16 millimeters. So I have the camera as wide as it can go. It's zoomed all the way out. I can actually zoom in if I want by just touching the lever here. You can see how you can zoom in and out. So actually somewhere right around here actually looks a little bit better. I'm using one large light for my light source. So it's a big soft box up there, video light. It's very quiet. But you can also use a window or you can use a more affordable light like something like this behind me which i reviewed a while back it's just a desk light it's really good for lighting stuff on the desk if you're viewing a product you want a nice side light profile and that'll give you nice dimension so the light source is up here to the right and i have nothing over here right now otherwise the camera is in full auto mode it's an intelligent auto video mode right now so what i want to show you is what happens when i hold up something in front of the camera you can see here that because my face is still on the scene, it's not focusing on the camera. As soon as I block my face, it focuses on the camera, but watch. As soon as my face comes back in, you see how the focus switches to my face? That's because the camera has amazing facial recognition technology built in. However, it has that feature on it called Product Showcase. It's on the back of the camera, and it's the garbage can button. And if you hit that button, um, it won't work while recording. So I have to actually stop recording, so hang on one sec. All right, so as you can see, the product showcase little icon pops up, and also that little menu shows up telling you if it's on and off as well. All right, guys, now I have product showcase on, so watch what happens when I hold up something in front of the camera, even with my face in the scene. See how it's focusing on the camera now? Otherwise, it would be focusing on my face. And you can see how quickly it changes. It's very responsive. So that's how the product showcase work. It basically shuts off facial recognition. So when you hold something up and your face is in the scene, it will just focus on whatever's closest to the camera. That's what that feature does. All right, so the other option you can use that does work while recording is that clear background feature. 
So right now I have it set to defocus. So it's trying to defocus the background and make the background as blurry as possible. What the camera is actually doing is putting it to the max aperture available. So with this lens right now, the max aperture I believe is f4 because I'm zoomed in a little bit. And if I hit the button again, it'll try to make everything sharp from the front to the back. So it's going to stop the lens down to like f8, f11 even to try to make the background sharp as well. So there's no separation between the foreground and the background. I particularly like that though, especially in an environment like this, because the ISO will be lower and also the background will be blurry and less distracting. So I'm going to switch it back. All right, so right now it's, it's set to background defocus, which is where I would prefer to have it. So you have the background as blurry as possible and that will give you the best look in my opinion. All right, so if you press that background defocus button, it will bring up an icon on the bottom that'll illustrate the mountain with the lines in it for a blurry background, or the mountain will be sharp for a sharp background. And if you hit the mode button on the top of the camera, that will cancel the background defocus and clear feature. Now, let me just show you how this looks if I try a different lens. Now, because remember, you just invested in an interchangeable lens camera. You could have got the ZV-1 that has a built-in lens, but you didn't. You got the one with the interchangeable lens. So you could put different lenses on there. This is the Sigma 30mm f1.4 lens. And this lens has a really fast max aperture. Now, why I'm showing you this lens is because I want to show you what the background looks like when you use a faster aperture lens like this. Also, take note, the ISO, which is the camera sensitivity, is really high right now because it's filming at f4 and I'm in a pretty low light environment. So it's filming at ISO 1000. And that's going to introduce a little bit of noise, a little bit of grain into the video. So I'm going to change out to this lens, which actually goes for $289 at the time of this review. And in my opinion, this should be one of your first investments if you want better, more professional looking video quality because the camera itself is already fantastic. Um, but the lens is really the weak link on the ZV-1, that 16 to 50 kit lens. If you get a lens like this, well, let me just show you how much, how much better it looks with a lens like this. All right, so to change the lens, you're going to need to push this button here and twist the lens off. Notice this button right here. That is the release mechanism for the lens. So I'm going to put the Sigma lens on here. Just line up the dot like so. Put the lens hood on. And now we have the Sigma 30mm f1.4 lens on there. Now let me show you what that looks like. All right, so now, again, the camera is still set to full auto, but now, because I'm in a lower light environment, the camera chose f1.4. Because remember, I have the background defocus on. So I want the background to be as blurry as possible. And right now, the camera chose f1.4, and it's at ISO 100. So I'm going to get the most blurry background and I'm going to get the cleanest video possible because it's at ISO 100. Watch what happens when I hold something up in front of the camera now. You see the background? How awesome it looks? Super blurry. Alright, let me show you what happens when I change the autofocus responsiveness and autofocus transition speed. Alright, so as you can see I have it set to fast and responsive. I want to change that. So if we go into it. AF transition speed, I'm going to lower that down to 4, right in the center there. I know it's hard to see because of the scene. Then I'm going to change the responsiveness. I'm going to lower that to 3. So now I'm set to 4 and 3. And let me show you how the camera behaves when it's set that way. So now what happen watch what happens when I put the product in front. You see how it changed slower and smoother? See, it takes a second before it notices it, and then it changes. So I kind of like it like this. It's a little bit more cinematic looking, and it's not as choppy. It waits just a second. The reason why I particularly like that is because I talk with my hands a lot, and when I put my hands in front of the camera, the camera will automatically focus on my hands. You see that? And I don't want it doing that. So that's why I like lowering the responsiveness and the AF transition speed. Also, when it switches, the process of the, of the focus changing is slower and more smooth. And it just, it doesn't look like, rant, 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 rant. like it just has a more smooth look to it. So I prefer it like that. So I would recommend those settings, but by all means experiment and see what works best for you. By the way, what do you think of the audio quality? It sounds pretty good straight off the camera. It will definitely sound better if you use an aftermarket microphone, however, but 
this works pretty good straight off the camera. If you were to use an aftermarket one, I have one right here. I have the, uh, the Rode Video Micro, and it's very simple to use. You just put, you can put it on the top of the camera. You can take that dead cat thing off the top of the camera, and you slide this unit into that spot, the hot shoe, and then you plug this into the microphone jack. This little guy. So you plug the microphone into the microphone jack, this cord, and then you will be recording audio on this microphone, and it'll sound better than the on-camera mic. And this goes for about $50 or whatever. Um, they do make better microphones, but you will need to adjust the audio settings. Remember when I showed you you have to adjust the audio levels? When you put a mic on, you definitely have to adjust the audio levels to make sure that it's not too hot or not loud enough. You need to dial that in whenever you use an external audio device like this. The only thing left would be to get your video footage off the camera onto your computer, whatever device you're using. In that case, what you're going to want to do the easiest way, in my opinion, is to plug the cable that came with the charger into the camera and then plug that cable into your computer. Uh, normally, most computers, my Macintosh is what I use, the, the drives will automatically pop up when you plug in and uh, that's how it should work. Now, if it doesn't work that way, it's just one of those things. There's options in the camera that you might have changed that will cause that not to work. And I can't speak for Windows because I don't have a Windows computer. I only use the Mac stuff. Otherwise, you can get yourself something like this. And this thing here, it has a memory card reader in it. And you can just pop that memory card out of the camera and slide it into the SD slot. And that will then pop up the folders and you can find your video footage and drag it over to whatever drive you want. I actually have a video on how to do that and if you want just go to my tutorials it'll be in there how to get uh, files off the camera onto your computer and also how I create a, a vlog for example or a YouTube video like this. I actually have a start to finish video using Final Cut Pro sort of advanced but it's beginner oriented and if you're getting into this game you are going to want to invest into some kind of editing software like Final Cut Pro if you're using a Macintosh or Adobe Premiere Pro or something like that. You could also use iMovie if you're using a Macintosh, that's pretty powerful. All right, so this was just a quick crash course into how to get the camera going, but I'm gonna come out with the beginner's guide, which is gonna be much more detailed for the ZV-E10. So stay tuned for that, and that'll go through all the different features in the camera. I'll go over the camera in much more detail on how to use it and explain you know, how the features work, what the features are, and so forth. That video is going to be over an hour long, though. I wanted to make a quick start guide one for those looking to just get recording in the studio, and uh, hopefully this video did that for you. So I'll catch up with you guys next time. Take care.